Great. Um, hello, everyone. As I think have been, it's very clear now. My name is Kalle. Uh, and I did a presentation yesterday um, about some Game Boy stuff. And this is kind of like a, a tangent from that, uh, the same project uh, where we built uh, a way of hooking up the Game Boy to external screens. Super quick, I'm Kalle, studied at KTH here in Stockholm, work at the healthcare startup Kry as the head of security, play a lot of CTF competitions for our team uh, Hacking for Soju. If you want to reach me afterwards, use uh, any of these methods. Uh, with that, uh, let's get into it. So, as I said yesterday, uh, I talked a little bit about uh, Game Boy hacking, and I was supposed to uh, uh, be able to uh, present these, the slides uh, that I had made, which were, those slides were not in any uh, typical slide format, like a PowerPoint presentation or a PDF file, but they were an actual uh, Game Boy ROM that I was running from a Game Boy emulator uh, on my uh, computer. That was the backup solution, uh, because what we have done was that we uh, had built a way of uh, hooking up the Game Boy to the system here. Unfortunately, there were some technical issues. Uh, but it does work, and I'm going to explain a little bit about uh, the process around it, uh, how we built it, how it works. And um, the kind of main takeaway here is maybe not like the, um, the thing we built, but more about like the process and how we did this. Um, so <clears throat> this started back in uh, June when uh, uh, I was talking to uh, Sekti about uh, doing a talk here, and uh, I started making some uh, slides and some, some drafts for, for that. And um, one of my teammates said that, well, uh, since you're talking about uh, Game Boy stuff, you should make uh, your slides uh, a Game Boy game. And of course, once that idea has been brought forward, there is, there is no turning back. You have to do that. Um, so fortunately, there is like a big uh, kind of like homebrew community around uh, Game Boy games. So uh, people have developed a, a C library uh, called the GBDK, uh, Game Boy Development Kit. So you can write your uh, Game Boy games in, in C. Uh, and what I did was um, basically wrote my slides in like a, a YAML file and used some Python to convert this into C code and then compile this into a Game Boy ROM. Uh, and also some manual uh, editing of uh, these. I had some images in the slides as well. Uh, and then my teammate again said, OK, so you're doing, doing a talk about Game Boys, and you have your slides on a, as a Game Boy ROM. So what if you present them from an actual Game Boy? And again, once this idea has been brought up, there's no turning back. So, uh, but we need to be able to kind of connect this to the projector because the Game Boy screen is quite small and dark. And uh, unfortunately, there is no um, like external video connection uh, on a Game Boy. Sad. So, um, we um, started by just analyzing the. Uh, trying to analyze the signal that is going from the like, motherboard of the Game Boy to the LCD uh, screen. So the first step was to just get the signal. Um, so we disassembled a Game Boy. And this is what a Game Boy uh, like motherboard looks like. And this um, like, connector at the uh, end is where the LCD screen connector is connected. Uh, so we built this kind of like breakout uh, connector with the same type of connector as on the motherboard. And then we hooked it up so that um, we took the cable from the motherboard uh, to a breadboard and then back to the real LCD, which is useful for uh, debugging your work. So this way, we can access the signal and still have the LCD screen um, working. Uh, so now it's time to uh, record some uh, traffic to figure out what's going on. And um, so we just hooked up. A, a logic analyzer to the, the pins uh, that we have brought out on the breadboard. Um, and uh, there are two, like the original Game Boy was released in like 89, it's a 
pretty big, uh, clunky thing. And then they released like a Game Boy Pocket in 94, which is architecturally pretty much the same, but they have some different pinouts uh, on the motherboard. So there was like a lot of documentation on this original version, but we have bought a whole bunch of Game Boy Pockets. So there was some like figuring out uh, which pins uh, was which one, basically. Uh, but in the end, we uh, hooked it up like this. So it's uh, some uh, probes from a logic analyzer connected to uh, some of the pins here from the, uh, the breakout that we did. Um, and then we just capture some data while the Game Boy is uh, running. And we bring this into um, our logic analyzer software. And we can start uh, looking at the signal for the screen. So uh, the way the um, Game Boy, the traffic to the, um, between the Game Boy motherboard and the LCD screen works is that you have uh, five uh, signals. Well, you have five, uh, you have five signals and, and ground. So there is the uh, horizontal sync, which will make like one tick every time uh, you start rendering one line on the screen. There's the vertical sync, which will just send one bit just at the start of, of each new frame. Uh, the Game Boy screen has four colors, so you need two bits to represent that. So you have two data uh, channels and then a pixel clock. So um, for each uh, cycle of the clock, uh, you get one pixel from the data uh, channels. And then is this is you have um, 166 pixels in a scan line, 144 scan lines uh, wide. Uh, and this runs at 60 uh, frames per second. So it's about 2.7 megabits uh, per second of data that we have to uh, parse. So first did some just like offline capture. We captured a chunk of data uh, and just rendered like one frame to make sure that we are able to do that. Wrote, wrote some, um, just some Python code to parse this and create an image. And that worked fine. Uh, and then it was like the final step to actually build like a real time uh, renderer for this to be able to do this to like hook up the Game Boy and, and get uh, a live video feed in real time. Um, so the first idea was like maybe we could just use the Raspberry Pi. It has a fast processor. We could use some uh, if we just read fast enough from the uh, I/O pins that might work. First, I just tried it in Python. That did absolutely not work. That was nowhere near fast enough. Uh, wrote some Go. Still not fast enough. Wrote, I was almost down at like hand hacking assembly, and then I realized that th this is not the limitation of like you know what programming language or system I'm using. This is a problem with the actual hardware uh, of the Raspberry Pi. So, looked like this. This we hooked up the signal from the LCD into the Raspberry Pi on the left. Um, so the next step was to use uh, something which is like more of a real time system that doesn't have an operating system. Uh, so I used an ESP32. Wrote some C code for that to read the signals and process it. And basically, it was fast enough to read the signal to catch all the, all the bits. But we didn't have enough uh, spare clock cycles to do anything with the data. So there was no time to send the data off anywhere else. So we could parse the data into the uh, processor, and then it was basically stuck there. What we could have done is like, uh, decrease the frame rate and just only read like every second or every third frame or something. Uh, but I mean, we don't want to settle for any half stuff. Looked, yeah, very similar. You can barely see that the ESP32 is hidden behind some cables there at the end of the breadboard. So finally, we realized that uh, let's do this on an FPGA. Uh, so I uh, went to one of my teammates' uh, apartments, and we had some uh, hacking session and programmed FPGA. Uh, so basically, built our own like custom chip. So uh, for uh, for people who uh, haven't uh, don't know about it, like an FPGA is basically uh, you can basically program your own chips with your own uh, logic and stuff uh, to build some real-time uh, system. Um, and uh, yeah, eventually uh, we got it got it working. So basically, we had like a three three parts to it. First, we have the module which decodes the uh, LCD signal in the way I described it, writes it into some uh, RAM 
And then you have, on the other end, there's a, a VGA encoder uh, module that will read the image from RAM and output the VGA uh, signal. So this uh, is what it looked like when I was hooked up to my uh, computer screen um, at home. And uh, yeah, I don't think we have any time for any questions. You can talk to me later if it's interesting. Some shout outs. Watch our um, monthly hacking show on YouTube, Pony Racing. And uh, a big thanks to some of my teammates, Bob, Lars, and Grosid, who helped out with this project. Thank you very much.